today happen. Um, I'd like to first uh, have us take a moment to reflect on who can't physically be here with us, um, the people we must not forget, uh, the people in our communities who are incarcerated, who are in institutions and nursing homes, who are poor and can't afford to miss a day of work to be here, uh, who just can't afford to be here at all, who are isolated in their homes without support, people who are living in inaccessible communities and neighborhoods. Let us not forget them and hold them close uh, in this moment. So, disability justice teaches us that we must be intersectional in our fight against oppression in order to achieve collective liberation. We must be led by those that are most impacted by racism, capitalism, transphobia, homophobia, ableism, and white supremacy. We need to elevate disabled voices and the voices of people of color uh, in order to end police brutality because half of the people killed by police are, are people with disabilities. We must honor disabled people of color leadership because 83% of women with a developmental disability are survivors of sexual assault and we need to end violence against our bodies. We must respect disabled people of color leadership in order to end the school to prison pipeline and to dismantle the prison industrial complex. Because 85% of youth who are incarcerated have a learning or emotional disability or both and their needs are not being met. Disability is tied to all of us and ableism, the system of oppression that devalues people with disabilities thrives when people with disabilities are silenced and excluded. So a sustainable and effective movement must actively work to address and end ableism. We must stop basing our worth, our social, political, and economic capital on the fucked up notion that we cannot produce because we, because when we do that, we are a, perhaps unknowingly sustaining capitalism and a system under which people with disabilities, fat people, people of color, queer and trans people can never thrive. We must assert that we are not just our bodies. We are not just what our bodies are capable of doing. We are not just body parts. We, people with disabilities, people who are crip, sick, chronically ill, are already whole. We are already full human beings. And it is outrageous that in 2017, disabled people still have to claim our humanity. In order to achieve justice, we must know and understand that the revolution has and always will be disabled and indigenous, black and brown, multilingual, immigrant, Muslim, Jewish, blind, young, old, poor, gender non-conforming, trans, queer, femme, and crip, sick and chronically ill. I also want to name what it is that we as people with disabilities are fighting for. We are fighting for health care. We are fighting for attendant support, for immigrant rights, for equitable education that honors our disability history, for access, for safety. We are fighting for our lives and we need you to fight with us. women right now because white women were the single demographic that shifted this election in Trump's favor. Uh, look at the statistics. <laughs> Hold yourself accountable, speak to each other about it, and do something about that statistic. <laughs> to all my disabled comrades who are out here today and who can't be here, I'm with you. We fight with our wheelchairs, our walkers, our crutches, and our canes. We resist with our crooked bodies, our tired selves, our depressed, anxious, and mad minds. And we are fighting the best way we know how, and that is fight enough. Thank you.